draft has begun. So let's jump right Excellent. in. Indeed. So starting off, uh, it is going to be on the left hand side, it is going to be Zealots. So Ma on the blue, I actually didn't check the size to see if they're the same size as what you asked for in the UI. Uh, nope. No. <laughs> Sorry, wrong way around. Are you sure? You asked for you asked for more on left. It didn't happen that way. No, it was Zealots on the left. Sorry. How do you know? Because I remember which way round they were in the lobby. Oh. So you just did a checkup and waited I three forgot, seconds. I forgot to I forgot to ask. Until you mentally <laughs> registered, you said, "Uh, nope." Okay. Yep. Pretty much. Sorry. Uh. Starting off, standard bands, frag, tass. Not surprising. Although, Zealots could have taken rag for themselves if they hadn't wanted to ban it. So, Ma on the right, yes? Yes, Ma on the right, Zealots on the left. Okay. So, what are Zealots going to pick? Standard, first pick for them. That's one of them. Tychus has been quite popular by them. We've also seen uh, Valor as first pick by them. We've seen uh, a fair amount of Rhaegar first pick. Give Grand Paqueta what he likes. Grand Paquette plays really well with Rhaegar and Malf. Cleansers have been amazing. His death count has been some of the lowest of everyone yeah. in the uh, entire tournament. Indeed. In terms of... Uh, like, there was always been a discussion about the top supports in Europe. And it... Uh, three names for a very long time. We have a couple who have snuck their way in now, but for a very long time last year, the three names that came up were Grand Paqueta, Bakery, and uh, SMX. Yeah. And SMX seemed to be third, at least in popularity and uh, the amount of times he was mentioned. Bakery won, and uh, Grand Paquette yeah. second as the Dark Horse. Now mm. I think probably most would agree Smexy is... Uh, Really up there, I would say that. I will fight to my reckoning. Great material taken away. So this is a, this is like the kind of target pick aways that we saw in the first cup, where they would remove Rhaegar from Grand Paqueta, Tyrion from a Pharaoh Angel, and if possible, Vala from Poyok. Yes, but there is no task star to go with it. But there's plenty of heroes that work with it as well. Medivh, Zarya, loads of people who work well. Hmm. So, Zealots. We've seen uh, hmm. Arthas coming out a couple times from Zarmony. ETC Which... Malf seems to be decent. Uh, be you would lovely, have yeah. super classical picks. Yep, that would be good. That would sort of... Uh, I believe... Oh, uh, yep, that's Grand Paquetas. So are they going to go ETC with it? I'm trying to think who plays ETC. Would it be Athero or Zarmony? I think Athero. We simply haven't seen Zealot go out of their way to be innovative for the sake of it. Like a team like a uh, team expert in Pro Division would do with ADRD, who have this uh, incumbent need to prove <laughs> that they can be different and win. Um, either to woo the fans or to fool their opponents. For Zealot, right. it is continue with the same formula until proven that, it, that our fundamentals are not good enough anymore to, uh, to win the games. Our draft fundamentals and our play. And it's 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 a really good approach if you're that kind of team, if you're that kind of player. But yep. uh, you know, for some, the world being standard is too boring, and they consistently want to uh, just change it up, different flowers every day. Some people just want to watch the meta burn. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> unfurl. <laughs> burn. So tier two bands, Sonia being banned out by more Greymane being banned out by Zealots. So removing those heroes who are empowered by Tyrion. Now what does that leave them with? Illidan, Kerrigan? Yeah, we've been, we've been saying Illidan for so long. I yeah. just, I'm starting to believe it doesn't exist. Do we have to, like, beg? <laughs> Please? <Illidan. laughs> Pick him! He's right there! Um, Artanis is still open, who could be pretty effective on this. You mentioned Kerrigan earlier. There's a decent amount of lockdown already from Zealots, but it might still work. And Medivh's still open, so they could uh, combine it with that as well. I think if you do go Kerrigan here, you should take Medivh as well. Just to yeah. survive through that uh, Entangle Power Slide duration. And to remove it from uh, countering Kerrigan as well. 
I would agree. But I don't think we'll see the Kerrigan Medivh rat. Zuldan Artanis, yeah, we don't see it. Also, chat, very, uh, very good point. Bringing up Splendor, completely missed that. Absolutely uh, would be in that I, top selection. I was actually thinking, like, I was trying to finish the thought. It was like, Smexy is up there, and then I was thinking, like, Misfits has a really good support. I was so yeah, impressed by him. What's his name again? completely blanked me. So, yes, you're absolutely right. I only half blanked, but I really appreciate <laughs> the filling in of the name of that blank, because, yes, yeah. I think Smexy... Probably number one support in Europe right now. Splendor, probably number two. Yes, thank you, chat. This is why we love you. Uh, so, last two picks for Zealots. They need a... Uh, in fact, they don't need anything. They can sort of pick whatever they like and have it work at this point. Yeah, that's true. That's basically where a Zealot usually finds themselves after three to four picks. Yesterday, we saw a few embarrassing... Well, embarrassing. Different triple assassin <laughs> openings, which is more Hero League reminiscent than, than competitive. Uh, yeah. Zealot generally goes 1-1-1 one, one, one on rolls, and they can take whatever they want later. Still with a love for Arthas. Yep, Zamani very much likes the hero, and he is very good at it, so I have no hate on it. It is very effective. Generally goes Army of the Dead, even though you could say, yeah, but pushing with the Punisher, disabling force. He just gets army. More damage, yeah. more healing. It's pretty good. More healing. Works out for him. He does not die. He very rarely dies on that Arthur. So if it works, then I'm not going to correct it. Now, what is the last pick? Never ranged, probably. It could be double mage. Would not be super crazy. You've got pretty decent yeah. auto attack damage from Rhaegar and Artanis. Kale with a uh, burn flesh would be very nice here. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I was thinking Ming. Also would work. A bit harder on the shrines, but a little bit more stable overall. Vala is the standard pick here. Just to yep. kind of put that out there. We've got 1.2 supports in Rhaegar and Tyrael, And there's no auto attack at range yet. I, stand yeah. I was just thinking, do you not go Vala? Because of the imminent Paris Light threat at any time where Vala can reliably auto attack. As well as the Howling Blast range at level 13, which Sarmini likes to get catching Vala. Yeah. And the fact that Arthas has 10 physical armor blocking some of her damage. I was thinking, Very do true. you go double mage for that reason? There's no spell armor here on the side for Team Zealot on none of the heroes. But it is going to be the very trusty and safe Vala choice. The pieces we of the. We have seen, though, a couple. Uh, uh, just to break up quickly, we have seen a couple here, uh, players here going for a full Q based Vala build, which could counteract the. Uh... It could counteract Zarmany a bit. Yeah, I mean, it is difficult to hit your Q on the right target going up against Double Warrior. First of all, it's going to spread where you don't want it to because it's kind of random. And also, Army of the Dead. And I think to remove Army, you just need a few Qs from Gul'dan and a multi-shot from Vala, and it's pretty much gone. So maybe multi-shot will be the choice to kind of deal with the uh, skeletons as well. But I can see how Q could be good outside of uh, Arthas' operating uh, ultimate. Anyway, on the right here, in the grand finals of cup number three in the open division of Europe, we've got Ma in the red. And it's going to be I, Hot, Rowan, Rask, Suris, Siku, and Knuti. Whereas on the left hand side, it is our current number one seed in the open division. It is Zealots played, playing with Zarmany, Poik, Shad, Grand Paqueta, and a Thero Angel. And uh, something we forgot to mention no Sylvanas again. Yeah. It, people have been telling me on chat that uh, she's a bit overrated. And it does seem to be that way a bit, as many games where she's played, she's unable to gain an early game advantage. And by not having one, she's unable to be the one that she's meant to be. Where you kind of push non-stop, kill forwards because of your level lead, your numbers lead and so on. Plays very poorly from behind and doesn't really get the lead. Um, except against, you know, people who consistently make a lot of mistakes. But as people get better and better, people are finding the reasons for taking Savannah's evaporate a bit. That's fair enough. Uh, speaking of making uh, speaking of making mistakes and letting things happen, uh, a lot of members of Zealous deciding to stand in all of Duty's damage, but are now paying him back by <laughs> killing him here. Too bad uh, it doesn't just... reset. He's still yeah. happy. Maybe they were luring him into a false sense of security. Uh, how many stacks like... does he have? 
Uh, he took, he got six, but four of those were in like the very first couple seconds where Tychus literally ran through it in the exact <laughs> pattern that it gave. <laughs> Reminds me of, uh, oh, anyway, it doesn't matter. Stupid analogy. <laughs> so, uh, Ar 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 Artemis here tries to escape with uh, Q and Face Prism. Shad will die, oh, as does Artemis. Nice save by Sir is making that a one for one. Yeah, uh, Ashash wasn't able to get a uh, flip onto Falsep, but he was able to do a bit of damage, and that's such set it up for Sirius with a very lovely run. How many different heroes does uh, Shad play? Too many. Too many to be as good as he is. He's the Vikings player as well, right? <laughs> he's the Vikings player, he's the Abatha player, he's the everything player. Yeah. Nice. Zero Angel with the power slide on Nuti will miss. Yeah. Going to take a little bit of damage from Nuti as, uh, in exchange for trying to be a little bit aggressive here. Fighting cold for Zami does get a nice through once again onto uh, Gul'dan, who is just sustaining through. Ziku dashing in, but no flip. Just biding his oh, time. Oh, power slide into Root. There's Tychus with the minigun, and that's going to be a kill. Uh, note that there is no uh, the bigger they are. Yep. As much of the initial damage will be coming out of the power slide ETC with Echo Pedal and then maybe some Arthas damage to Root. And then by going the bigger they are, you can't finish off someone as fast because you only bring them to 40%. Uh, like for instance, in this case, he was able to turn on Minigun when Rhaegar is already at 30% life. And we'll yeah. finish him off really fast with that. Which, uh... Worked out, which worked out for him in this case, and also that just gives him in the stacks. Tyrion getting focused oh, to help by the Punisher, man. pretty much everything else. So the way you do that, bye bye. <laughs> you throw the Eldruin's <laughs> well, Might away, let the boss jump, and then you teleport as it is mid-air, and it will miss. Yeah, so don't let it hit you. Of course, that was uh, an unintended mistake. Yes, unintended mistake indeed, but unfortunately that unintended mistake will cost him his life and cost his team the first fort of the game. Going over to Zealots. Nuti just desperately trying to siege back. He's, he's sacrificing a little bit of health for his uh, for his mana here. He has consumed soul to assist with that, so he can uh, eat a minion. I'm sure they are delicious. Tanis and Valak going for Faustad here. Should not be able to have to kill potential unless he uh, gets the really long distance swap, and that was a short range. Especially with Surus not paying attention and going for the minion wave instead. Oh no, we should ban the skin from Shad. Oh, we still doing it? Yep. <laughs> Shad, stop! <laughs> Shad, stop it! <laughs> oh dear, Shad, please. Oh, I got Ghoul Dad having a little bit of trouble, just dodges the root and is able to pull back, and as such, Rasp also able to escape. Surus has gone for Creed of the Hunter, by the way, so going for ah. that extra uh, auto attack build. Okay, so he is going full auto. Probably mm -hmm. Manticore tempered by Discipline, I would say, though I haven't seen all that much Manticore. No, neither have I. It's, it's, uh, it will work here. Like, it's going to be able to, t even with Arthur's, like you said, the armor, I don't believe, uh, takes into account percentage damage. Yeah, I don't think so. Like too. Seriously, help. Death Dealer being taken. Still water attack based, so that is fine. At full stacks, that means 140% bonus damage of her auto attack. If she gets a kill from that, no grace period either. It has to literally be a last hit. Then yeah. uh, Vault will instantly reset. No mana, no cooldown. Yep, yeah, but with the amount of crit damage you can get out of that, it's not too hard to last hit something. Remember, this can be a hero, a minion, it could be an objective skeleton. Pretty easy on this map in particular. Like it resets all the mana as well, so if you can time it right, you can basically become a pseudo Kerrigan. Yeah, and uh, actually Poyok is the one that makes the most use of that, a minion wave. He loves to time it out all the all the time. He gets like six vaults per minion wave, <laughs> killing all the minions. Yeah, super cool to see. This is why this is why we're all so impressed by Poyok at the moment. Just an insane player. Turns down Ziku, gets a flip onto a Bearer oh. Angel, focuses him down, the Bearer has to dash out. Now if that was 10 levels later, Titan Killer would have shredded through it to see he'd be super dead. Yeah, indeed, but luckily he is able to survive this time and now he's moving back in, finds Surus. Valsat's not here by the way, he is giving his team an XP advantage, but as such they are currently losing the objective. Ooh. Flip lands on Zarbody, can they focus him down? He is very tanky. And as such, he is wading through that damage and is able to survive. But that did force the rotation from Falstad. Oh, Ooh, the gust. mighty gust. Twilight and Tree, Moshpit with so the cleanse. Wow. That was three kills. The heroics farmed by Falstad, instant rotation, and many kills.
Wow, they literally picked Heroic and insta-used it. Yeah, pretty much. Like, absolutely perfectly done. Uh, on the bright side, Gul'dan is nearly fully stacked. <laughs> he is at 38 out of 40. The glass is half full. Half you full, are level yeah, exactly. 8 versus 11, but <laughs> quest. Yeah, quest. Don't worry, guys. I'll win with, our, with my single damage. That was pretty bonkers, actually. The level lead was not that big. It was like 0.8 level. Like, ah, oh, they're at level 10 a bit earlier, but let's just be here, kind of dissuade them from taking the shrine too fast. Nope. Yep, not able to get it in this. But right now, seeing a very easy clear on the scouting throne, and they have to defend without heroics. This is just a super rough time for them, and actually, how long till uh, Twilight Dream? 29 seconds, they might be able to get another engage. Yeah, Gus is back. They need to give up this fort. Uh, yeah, they, did the, they did the thing where there's kind of like the bystanders effect. I know it's wrongly used, but they were just kind of looking there and not doing anything, even though something needed doing. They were unable to contest the shrine, nor defend the fort, and still stayed where they were and just watched as bad things happened. Uh, it's one of those cases where you would like to do an assault in another lane, get some value somewhere else. Problem is, no murk camps were up for the taking for them, and actually doing what I just said would have allowed Faustad to gust the entire team to rotate and kill them again in a different lane. Oh my god! Oh, Artanis, no! <laughs> he's <laughs> no. gonna live this, but actually hey, he's gonna be able to pull this to mid lane? I've no, never can't. seen the Immortal... Uh, I mean, the Punisher pulled quite in that direction. No, that was that was weird, and as such, he's gonna stay in front of the gate and help the team siege this. Falzad arrives and crashes into the wall, but their angel goes in. Sanctification is forced out. The fear is very good, but the gust prevents any kind of engage, and Mosh Pit is available again. Can they kill Rhaegar or Altanis? <laughs> Instead, no, it's EDC that dies first, but they finally kill Rhaegar. Oh man, there was a lot of damage that uh, the blue team took there. Uh, <laughs> this is just dead. mad. To two for two. Can anyone make another kill? Nudi chasing down Poik. Poik trying to just do the percentage damage with the minigun. Ziku has a fair amount of health, but his shield isn't up for another eight seconds. He needs to get some auto attacks, but instead he's going to find a root. Oh, the swap oh, ones are already still going. Can he get it? Root is dropped. Yes. Nudi able to grab another kill. Ziku oh. and Kill by the grenade. And they get Nudi. It's just Rack versus Grand Paqueta and Poik. And he's just going to flee. But his team is about to respawn. He's trying to bait. Ah, uh, yeah, that's true. He. Oh, okay, yeah. I never really play like that. It's like, oh, my team is coming back. If we can just keep them there a bit more. That's uh, the cool warrior moves. Yeah. It's very... St it's strange, but it worked. Uh, it didn't work out for it, but it was a cool move. I mean, very in Hero cool League, move. it will work out 100% of the time. Everyone's greedy for chasing kills, so... Yeah. Tyrion stays there for a material. second. They're just yeah, gonna... Yeah, blows up on... Blows up on uh, Malfurion, and then Valor shows up and last hits him with yeah. the vault. Just kills Tychus. Cool, li cool little move. Just good map awareness. Cool to see. Keep it still alive. It took a bit of uh, chip damage. About 10% is gone. Uh, Mars still has a chance, but if the if there's any indication from how most of the fights have gone, they're in a spot of trouble. They need to scratch themselves behind the ears and say, okay, where do we actually mount our last ditch effort defense? Is it at level 13 with triple strike? Imposing will? Do we try to wait it out till 16? Or do we just fight a yeah. talent down? Now, this does happen. Look where Shad is. Oh, so far nice. forward. He was looking for an opportunity, but his team was not ready. And uh, he didn't sniff him out yet. No, he's actually just snuck his way out of here. He's Mission Impossible in, gathered information, and then left. That's all he did. But uh, let, uh, let's have a quick look at stacks while teams are dancing around preparing for the objective. Falstad, currently on 32 stacks. I've seen some marksmen, so he's approaching completion. Artanis a little bit further behind on 24. Gul'dan is finished on his Echoed Corruption, and Valor, though, only with 35 out of 100 on her Creed of the Hunter. Ooh. Yeah, kind of hard when you get deleted there. instantly. I mean, I would not take this out normally against uh, ETC. Yeah, it's pretty rough. Like, look, he really barely easy. dares to... He, he, like, he, look at that. He doesn't dare to get a single auto attack in. There's three since you mentioned it. Four attacks. Yep, 39 out of 100. Now. Still looking super rough. Clearing up the objective, currently 14 stacks to 14. They are even in that stead, at least. Yeah. Dennis sharking around here at the bottom side. Uh, the map pressure is positive for Team Zealot. Uh, wow, that was actually a pretty cool move for Tannis with the double swap there into the Echoed Corruption. Not gonna be enough yeah, yet. The sanctification is dropped. Tyrrell having to pull back though out of it. Ziku will be ancestral, but the boss is dropped. He's cleansed out, tries to dash to freedom, but still dies to Twilight Dream. 
Uh, man, uh, Team Zealot is doing really good marsh pits here with the cleanse every time from Grand Paquette. Having this period where it's uncancelable. Cleanse came out likewise on Artanas and he dashed out, but to what end? Eventually he'll always come back. And it was actually yeah. on his outbound itinerary that he got recaptured by Marsh. As Marsh is many mini stuns. Every 0.25 seconds it does a mini stun. It's kind of how it's coded. So you need to use that one second cleanse to get out of it. And on Q, you always come back. There we go. Didn't able, wasn't able to once again teleport away from the boss stud. And as such, took a little bit of damage. But Punisher pushing forward. They haven't managed to take the keep yet. And with everyone alive, there is a small chance they could defend this. Yeah, yeah. There's a suppression power, so we'll mitigate much of the damage. Still, not a keep lost. Vala doesn't have a lot of mana. I don't think they can really push here. They are, but they shouldn't. But yeah, they so are. A amount of damage. <laughs> they should have, but they are. Tyrael turned on his cleanse. There's the gust, and the focus is good. Tyrael goes down. Double flip is landed. Shad's going to get blown up. Yes, nicely done by Tyrael. There's the fear to try and turn this around, but Gul'dan getting focused out. He's completely surrounded. He gets another kill, though. Nuti. Finally finished off the surrounding Malfurion. He drops the Rui micro behind. And he will es maybe escape here, actually. They're still chasing. Zekut dropping low. And, wow, he is just completely surrounded. He is not getting out of there. <laughs> Grab again a Twilight <laughs> Dreams for good measure. Wow. <laughs> that you was just, overkill. He was on, like, 40, uh, 140 health and he got Twilight Dreamed. Did you see the pinks? <laughs> no, I didn't. Um, Team Zella did, like... 10 pings from Grand Paquette, like, wants to help Mal, wants to help Mal. <laughs> the kind that's normally a sign that someone is being silent and toxic. But in this case, of course, since they're probably friends and, uh, you know, teammates, it's more like, hey, you really wanted to kill Steel with Twilight Dream there? Was it necessary? <laughs> well, they got it. Kill Secure. It is, it is captured there. It is up in 51 seconds, which will probably be up for the next objective, or at least slightly after it. In fact, I'll definitely be up for next objective. Uh, uh, does Falstad have the 40 season marksman stack yet? Uh, hang on. Yes, exactly 40. Okay, so he's got the bonus attack speed now if he chooses to use it. Some may wonder why Boomerang, when you go for Hammer Gains, Giant Killer and Season Marksman, why not get the secret weapon? It's true, secret weapon is amazing. And if it was just team fights, he may even have gone for it. It's just that in order to get Season Marksman stacks, you need to clear waves. And Boomerang does it so much better than Secret Weapon. If yeah, the one wave other... is coming in a Congo line like this, Boomerang will just insta-clear it. Yeah, there's one other build, which if you're not up against uh, lanes that might push, which is uh, taking the Lightning Shield and the extra Lightning Rod range, which allows you to duel from a little bit further away, but that's sort of a counter to a little bit of hard engage when you're trying to deal with a long-range damage dealer. Siku trying to do the flank here with Artanas. Goes in with the swap. Will get... Oh, Does he doesn't get, get the Arthas wall. over the wall. There are Angel zones out the protection for Zihu, but he has to pull back. Zihu with that Titan killer now is able to do a le pretty decent amount of damage to a Thera. But Thera is not careful. He's going to wait forward. Uh-oh. Bala caught out in front. Will get cleansed there. Very nice. Horrify. Melv drops to 30%, but the follow-up is not possible. Artanas stays alive thanks to Sanctification and Ancestral Healing. Very good move here. They get Arthas. Can they do the follow-up though? They're dropping low. Oh, the mush pit! Oh, Gul'dan walks in. You still there? I think it's just me for now, guys. As we seem to have lost Thatcher for just a bit here. He didn't catch my cue, so that was kind of obvious. And uh, yeah, uh, Punisher goes to Team Zealot here after... After Maul got Arthas, they were unable to capitalize as Ethereal Angel's mosh pit zoned out the rest too well and Siku was caught by himself. Punisher, Arcane Punisher now taken by Team Zealot. They're pushing in hard here and they're looking to potentially end the game. It's a 4 versus 3. They haven't lost any uh, crucial hero here. It's just a second warrior. I'm gonna get this keep here. Will they go for the core? I don't think they have to. It would not be safe. But they're gonna go for it. Vala here with the flank uh, will narrowly dodge the hammering here from Falstad. Very smart pull here off the Punisher to the mid keep. Very crucial move here. Definitely something you need to learn to master as it's basically just manipulating a predictable AI mechanism here. Horrify comes out on Falstad, but a very timely cleanse once again by Grand Paquette. Playing a very good cup today.
Just checking uh, to see if I have any message from Tetra. It seems to have uh, disconnected. His internet died. I'll wait till he comes back, should be momentarily. And level 20 is on the horizon here for Team Zealot. And they're starting to shark around to look for kills, despite not having level 20, which is smart because everyone knows AFK soak level 20, then fight. So by not doing that, you created, create an unpredictable opportunity to try and get some pickoffs. And they were very close to doing so, actually. But if they lose here, they're going to regret doing this. Shot goes down level 19.9. He could have used his level 20 to uh, actually get away here. Uh, Rain of Vengeance will block uh, a Thero Angels and Marshmid attempt. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bloodbath. It's mayhem. Poyok. Can he kill someone here before he goes down? It was very close. And as unpredictable and untraditional as it was by Team Zella to go for that 19.8 engage. This kind of proves why most people don't really. They go for what is attempted to be a kill on Artanis, who did seem to be alone just a few seconds before. But uh, fast forward by five seconds and suddenly he brought a lot of friends. And this is one of those lol, they went for a pre-level 20, they were almost there, why not just play it safe? But again guys, it was smart! They would never expect you to engage with 19.8, and they didn't, but maybe execution was off a bit. Or maybe traditions like waiting for 20 exist for a reason, because it's safer. Nonetheless, all six forts are still up, Team Zealot is definitely not out of it. But uh, in not killing that keep yet, they only have single catapult pressure, which means Ma still has a chance. The position of the Punisher is important. It means that if they lose it, it represents a keep loss and very much so probably a second keep loss if they can pull it to the top keep. If not, that's core. So Ma, they need to win this fight. It starts out pretty well. Titan killer Artanis is doing a good number on the Thero Angel, who by the way took Bolt of the Storm. It kind of shows how he's been having a hard time dealing with the Manticore Titan Killer that's coming out here. Big red button has been activated. Poyok looking to put some major pain there with that Odin on the enemy team. Boom! That's a nuke on Ross, but he's got Hardened Shield. Ma looking for an engage. Need to heal up just a bit before they can go in again. Nice. Oh! Graviton Vortex with the slow there. And Arthas is almost down. The fear is huge. Oh, big red button doing a major number there. But what is going on here? Zarman, you need to see are so low. Who can finish them? Can it be Suris? It's a four versus four situation with all the front line here of Team Zealot being so low. Magnificent fights here. Would love to see that again and again. Now, there are triple catapults here. This is going to take the paint off of this car here. And Siku scrambles to defend. They get the Punisher. It's a Mortar Punisher. Punisher is taken. About 10% core damage. Just 7. Put de push one more wave and then rejoin with your teammate. Actually, you only need to kill the Catapult. This Punisher gets the first actual structural damage of the game thus far. And it's going to be a fort down here, which means... Not much, actually. The next Punisher cannot be mid, it's never twice in the same lane, which means the next Punisher will still go up against the tier 1 structural uh, defenses. Which means that Ma cannot rely on the objective to win. That's why they're setting a trap like this. Now let's look at the options they got. They can go AFK, get their Murkamp, kind of play the usual game, or set these kinds of traps. Now, doing good actions late game always comes down to expectations and breaking those expectations that's kind of what team zealot did isn't it going for that level 19.8 engage is going against expectations so let's tell the story here of ma they have just all shown in top lane and the expectation is that they might do an invasion on the bruiser here the desperation might put them to do such an act which is why Grand Paquette and Athero are anchoring for the team here. Now we see one member showing, two members, three members showing. And what would be the next point? This Impaler Camp. That's the expectation. Team Zealot has that story in their head, but because they still need to defend here, they're not going to invade. They're going to let it happen. So both teams are playing predictable here, and not really trying to go for some kind of desperate place. 
I say desperate. Let's say not going for um, trying to create opportunities in a in a hard way. Um, that was a rain of vengeance. We shall never talk of it again. Ethereal Angel, power slides forward. We'll get Rain of Vengeance, taking a lot of damage. Farflight Quiver Vala with Manticore here is a big threat on ETC here. He cannot stand for long. He does not have imposing presence. It's Showstopper. So after power slide, he's got about two seconds where he will... No, it's four seconds. Where he will take reduced damage. But even 25 armor is not enough to stop him from the Wrath... That is Manticore, Farflight, Quiver, Vala with Creed of the Hunter. It's also not 10 armor. I'm back, by the way. It's 25, right? It is 20. It's not 10 armor, though. It's 25 armor, which should sound like it's better, but it's not 10 armor. Yeah. 10 armor will save you <laughs> where people don't expect you to. 25 is just like, that's yeah, a standard amount. 10 is the special one. We learned that last time. Cool. False stop. Mighty Gust forward. Yeah, only gets looty, but he's still pretty far away, and we're actually seeing Zarmony getting focused down there very nice. And like you said, Suris, with that just huge range on Farflight Quiver, just shreds that. That feel when your Mighty Gust would have saved yourself and your teammate, <laughs> but you used it for uh, mm, not amazing purposes. Wow, look at that. The swap into a Holy Ground. That was Ooh, fun. the bull. But they're both bolting for oh, freedom. Oh, Suri's trying to do some holy ground misses. Shickle, it's up to you. Oh, the, the double swap! Nicely done. And Poik feared as no well. Way. And Ma with the comeback. Uh, Grandpa Cat has been playing amazing lately. Is it yeah. one versus five defense amazing? I don't think so. Uh, yeah, I <laughs> think that one is. Oh! Oh, my. Okay, well, he got the five. He got the five man uh, silence and killed the guy, but. It's still GG. Ancestral is dropped. Zico is healthy. Suriz is at this point fully stacked and looking great. And they are going to shred the core. And that is GG. Now, Tesha, do I like the word throw? Uh, no, I think we should uh, take inspiration for one of our third or fourth place teams and call it a toss. A t <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. yeah, it was a bit of a tosser in this game. Yeah, it seemed like a toss-up in the middle after uh, Zealot was leading the entire game, but then they tossed it away in that 19.8 fight. I'm not sure if you yeah, saw they... that with your internet dropping. Uh, no, I when I came back, Valor was fully stacked and killing everything. That's oh. when I joined. But yeah, sorry guys, my internet dropped. Just everything sort of died. And then it came back. It came back. Like it a seemed phoenix to be from the now. ashes. My computer is telling me that my ser uh, the service host something or other, service host local system 19, is using a horrendous amount of internet and it won't tell me why. So that's good to know, but hopefully we should be able to, it won't kill my entire internet again. Now you said service host, but there was a yes. T carrying over from a previous word and it sounded to me, at least, like service toast. So that service might be toast. it. Mm. Stop putting your services <laughs> in the toaster, Tetsu. <laughs> It's not the time I for it. Not to. Yes, it should, but there's Frog Lucio. Ribbit Lucio. Uh, I already have Ribbit. He's not. Same. <laughs> so, yeah, maybe the Master Skin. Just for the sake of owning it. Tassadar, Rag, Standard Bands. Is it Ribbit because that's the sound a frog makes? Yes. Can you make it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think dance, so, monkey! <laughs> <laughs> dance, monkey, dance! <laughs> Uh, no, I don't think I can. I think uh, you can, but I think you don't want to because you have self-respect. I think self you can do it better. Uh, <laughs> grant us strength. Ribbit. <laughs> really put my heart and soul into that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, I can make this out of tadpole makes. Oh, well done. There it was. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> nailed it. All right, Malfuria in his first pick. That's a, a very zealot esque move, and also just a very standard move that we've seen a lot of times. And like you mentioned before, last time we were on Tomb, very strong on this map. Shall we just say that every time in HGC, Korea, Pro Division, NA, where uh, someone takes Mal, it's like hmm, very zealot esque because <laughs> they really discovered this hero Malfurion. Didn't they? I hear I will fight what? my last breath. First That's pick? very uh, first pick the Zevo. Okay, fine. Like we already know it's strong. 
Maul is just remembering that, just like, yeah, is all it, right. Is <laughs> it it first big strong tensure? Uh, well, the fact is, they need to get to the late game, so they've sort of set up for a late game without anything to get them there. So okay. they need to get Johanna or something like that to try and delay. So how do you make a game not go to late game? If your team's uh, out, do you take away the late game delaying tools? You need to take something that's going to win you the early game. So Zul, Sylvanas, someone like that who's going to be able to just set your lanes up for super hyper push. Ah, How deck. about and you ETC should take away the, the delays. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that also, sounds really intelligent, Tetsu. Tell me more. Uh, <laughs> tell me more while I lock in my couch by Marine. Uh, no, but I think it's cool. Like, yeah, I think Zul Savannas could give you that. Yeah, they're just not doing it. No. <laughs> they know what they like. No, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, standard Zealot style picks. Zealot knows tell me more, like. though. Like, what, <laughs> what, other, what other heroes could do that? Like, I... I I don't know. Like, if you had to say early game winning hero, like, but the other the other option would be to pick something late game for themselves, right? But then, aren't you pushing it to late game with that? Exactly. But if you pick something that, uh, then they can't delay to late game, but you're doing it for them. <laughs> what I'm what I'm saying is they already have Tyker, so they have an auto attacker, which is going to make superstition a bit harder. Mm -hmm. I'm suggesting Asmo. Yeah, but that's making superstition better. Yes, but then Superstition is going to make him vulnerable to Tychus. Yeah, but can Tychus always reliably attack Nazebo? Maybe with Portal. Maybe with Odin. Yeah, 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 that's true. The extra Odin's attack right. range. I just, I don't think you can really say as a range damage that you'll always hit the other's range damage. Like as an that's auto true. attacker. Right, let's check out what they've done. They've taken Artanis. They we saw lost last game to Artanis, baby rage. <laughs> 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 Not it's, Arthur, it's it was Artanis. But... That's fine. So now it is time for picks. I think Johanna maybe something else that could delay. There's anything that's going to delay the game for as long as possible uh, by Ma at this point. Honestly, if I I've just been thinking about it again. Like if it's early game heroes, and I know the meta shifted, and you you want to win the game early, you would just go etc, Toronda, Kerrigan, that kind of thing. Yeah, just uh, full stuns and just snowball from there. Yeah. Johanna, yep, calls. and Valor, good AoE, okay. good wave clear, not bad. Uh, so last pick, they can probably fit in a solo later. If they get the Auric, that would be a really solid looking comp, I think. They probably will. Uh, you think of Johanna, everything that Johanna can escape from is basically everything, except if it's like a full perfect stun chain yeah. that doesn't get cleansed. But there's three things that Johanna hates. And tomb, force wall, and, and murky because he's oh. really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> well played, sir. Well uh, played. No, but actually, yeah, zombie wall and tomb and force wall. You're right. Oh yeah, zombie wall, which they have one of already, and it's the right. test our band. Force so, wall's gone, so, so yeah, murky and tomb. Huh. But, so what you're saying is that it's going to be murky. <laughs> <laughs> no, she hates it, but it doesn't mean she doesn't like. She can't beat murky. She can. She can also unstoppable before Octograb. She just doesn't like him very much. Fair enough. I can't see why. Yes, Yorick Yorick. stolen. Smart move by Zealots. Has there ever been a great counter jo to Joe? Oh, Kalthas, hello. hello. It's been Salama a while since we've seen you. Did you know Kalthas yeah. is a blood mage? Uh, yeah, which used to be a... No, he's not a blood mage, he's a blood elf. But he's also a blood mage. Is he? Yeah. I actually meant to say blood elf. Oh, but I he, don't think it is a Blood Mage. Kael'thas, uh, as a Warcraft 3 hero, is called Blood Mage. Really? Mm -hmm. I did not know that. Yeah. Well, he's a Blood Elf, aka High Elf, where everything got messed up. Well, how did it get messed up? Uh, that would be the Scourge, sir. Oh. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> you mean like his friends turning to undead and stuff? Well, yeah, and uh, the entirety of uh, Kelphalas. Yeah, the entirety of Kelphalas getting wrecked to the ground and their portal being used wrecked? to summon a demon. Well, he wasn't there at the time. That's the issue. Oh, that's why That's why he's okay. He must yes. have a lot of survivor's guilt. Well, so, uh, exactly. That's why he. That's why his people are called the Blood Elves in memoriam uh, of the people who died. Sylvanas being one of them. Oh, go figure. 
Uh, speaking of which, the most annoying mission in uh, Warcraft 3, not just out of difficulty or anything, just Sylvanas taunting you while you're chasing her down as Arthas is exceptionally <laughs> annoying. <laughs> you'll never get past this gate, Arthas. Yeah, oh, you yeah. broke that gate. You'll never get past our second <laughs> gate, Arthas. I, I remember. I remember. <laughs> uh, fun game. Ah, right on time, Kelthos switches to the correct skin. Yes. Super Kael'thas, and Dahaka was the last pick, by the way, which is another good solo laner. Can be drained by Leoric, but you can cancel that with Burrow, but it seems like a, always feels like a waste of Burrow to me. Yeah, that's true. Uh, it is a longer cooldown than drain. Yeah, so you need to just you need to get good and dodge, basically, is what we're saying. Uh, Dahaka is an excellent solo laner. He can use his BZ to uh, Hearthstone, and then just see back to the lane he was in. There yeah. isn't too much emphasis on Dahaka using his burrow to go from south to north to make a 5v4. Not on this map. Here, yeah. his BC is usually used to just refresh himself in the lane and just keep pushing. He's gone for primal aggression. Big surprise. Yeah, not really, yeah. That's the standard talent completely. Let's introduce them, by the way. More on the right hand side. 1 0 up in this series. Ziku is playing the aforementioned Dahaka. Nuti on Nazebo, I Hot Wound on Rhaegar, Suris on Vala, and Rask on Johanna. And on the left in the blue, Team Zealot, Ethereal Angel on ATC, Grand Paquette on Mouth, Shad on Tychus, Zarmini on Lyric, and Poyok on Keltas. That is exciting to see. Starting with Convection, oh, continuing to spoil that? my dreams, though. Zombie Wall. Oh, to block the minions? Yeah. Very nice. I didn't know like there was that. 100% block. I guess it is. If it, if it works out, yeah. Oh my god, that is so far back. It's gonna get to one of the bit. Oh, that means the mage leads. That's slightly less idea. Yeah, he, he missed. Yeah, he missed. On a predictable trajectory minion path movement. Super cool idea, though. Look how far back that lane is. They were easily able to finish top lane that's and like, they're still able to get down to mid. That's a million times better than trying to body block it. One, you'd need less action so you could just kind of chill and drink your tea. And two, it was much farther back than even five people yeah. blocking the minion wife with their body does. Exactly, that was that was one hero doing a far better block than four do. Or even five. Rask getting living bombed, has to pull back a little bit, instead runs into his minion wave and does damage to them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but th the thing is he had to, because uh, Surus was too close to him. It's like Surus wanted to get chain bombed. And by dodging her, he had to explode the minion wife. I, I saw the dilemma. Yeah, I the know, Rask. Wall. I know. The zombie wall stopped him going into uh, the enemy team's minions as well. Pretty yeah. clever. Brooks Lots of a living bomb harass. Poik, making the maximum use out of his mana that he can. I believe he's using uh, infused living bombs most of the time. Yeah. So he's not yeah, he's making good. maximum use of his mana. He's trying to use it as little as possible. Oh my god, my that word. zombie wall. Yeah. Now he has to go back. That was nice, though. He has no mana, but nice. Yeah, he's healed, he's healed back a bit. Uh, he's already still pretty good for mana, still pretty good for health, and he has Mafia in with him, so they're pretty good. I guess Remember, so. Remember, this is very much about keeping Kel'Has alive so he can stack. He's currently on one stack. Nice. Keep it going. Did it. Nazebo, on the other hand, Ooh. is doing slightly better on 35. Uh, Nazebo is a better player than Kel'Has. Confirmed. Just got owned by Knuti. Nuti, so good. Uh, Dahaka, by the way, has snuck his way up to the top lane, wanted to try and gank Shad, but that does leave Leoric to be spooky in the bot lane solo for a while. That's embarrassing. I just said this isn't the kind of map where you do that. But let's see <laughs> what it actually achieves. <laughs> yeah, well, the minion wave, one minion miss in terms of XP. Uh, Dahaka getting rooted. Flame Strike just misses timing wise. Drag also misses. A plethora of failure from every side. <laughs> And we're seeing Jahad are able to pull back without getting too much damage from the drain, but Lyric remains sustained as always. So Vala suddenly finds herself covering bottom lane for a bit, but uh, Dahaka finally makes it back down again. Uh, not going for Creed of the Hunter this time, despite once again being up against Double Warrior. Bit more wave clear centric here, gonna deal with those webbies. Right now, a lot more gems turned in by Zealots, whereas Ma are currently holding onto a few. Speaking of which, top eight very pushed uh, by Ma here, doing a good job with that. They have been doing a good job. 
Muti goes for the big voodoo, bonus heal and mana. Blood Ritual is actually pretty good as well. But when you can get this many stacks and increase your perm health and mana by that much, it's difficult not to go for it. Yeah, Blood Ritual is the sustain one, right? Uh, yes, yes. It's, okay. it's pretty good on certain maps. I don't think you do it on a map like this. Maybe on Braxis Holdout, it could be the superior one. Ooh, yeah, I can see that. Makes sense if you're not going to be rotating that much. Yeah. 29 gems to 31. Both teams very even in terms of that. Uh, Rask having to retreat the long way around as Poik was in position to maybe interrupt his escape. Nice knock up. Zabli trying to body block. They're going to try and kill off Rask here and they'll get him. Good gank there. Honestly, I don't know. I didn't know why he's Wraith walking after him. I thought it was ambitious and uh, overly optimistic, but anything but. Kael'thas had the stun, landed it to perfection, and he got the kill. Yeah, beautifully done indeed. And as such, they were able to hit level 7 a little bit before. We have the Ghastly Reach, Echo Pedal Sander, just helping clear the lanes. It is Burnt Flesh, so we'll see if they can get that little bit of percentage damage onto Johanna, Standard, Cleanse, and Tychus. He has a couple options here. Uh, Valor has the option to die and then come back in 18 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> it's such That's a strong option. combo, man. Even after Power Slide face melt, as long as it was in the middle of Entangle, she still rooted while in the new location. That's weird. Yeah. That's a long tendril from the earth that roots you. You could displace half a mile and you're still rooted to the same tendril. Yeah, it's a uh, long, long roots. Works out for them here. Uh, Attack is a bit of a quarterback, by the way, and level 7 was hit by more as well. Zebo, more spiders! If you hit only one enemy, you create two additional spiders, basically making it an insane single target ability. Yeah, spirits of Arakir. Spirit of Arakir. And who will we be singling out? It's actually pretty good on EDC or whomever you catch in your zombie wall. You know what? Even if you hit multiple enemies, it's whatever. Uh, still good damage. ETC is actually trying to help out his team deal with this kind of late game damage as well as he went with Frog Rock, which is also uh, quite easy to stack on this map, but it means he's going to be able to help deal with that uh, nice AoE that the Zebo can offer in the late game. Siku taking a lot of damage here from Zarmony, even uh, dodges the purple wave of damage that the Webby does. Uses yeah. Essence, it will do a bit of a drag there on Leo. Rain. Ziku, the other essence oh, working out nicely for wow. him. Fountain's down. Oh, very nice. Able to take out Nazebo there. That's he's fully stacked, so it's not the worst thing in the world, but death is death. And there's the hacker as well, dying in the bot lane. Uh Sirius picks up some of the gems. Uh, and will die. Uh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Slowed by 50%. Mm. <laughs> yeah, he tried to vault, but the grenade caught him very easily. And with heroics, the we are now seeing exactly what you uh, what we predicted: the early game lead being gained by zealots here. They're going to try and snowball this so much that late game is going to be impossible to achieve by more. That is the attempt. Top wave though, pushed once again for the so manyth time. Uh, half damage on uh, <laughs> both towers. Uh, yeah. We were in a similar situation last game where uh, Ma fell behind by about this much. Yeah, they well, can still do it. It's never over with Ma. Especially with a comp like that. But yeah, um, as Zealot, you should be ahead against a team like this. You need to be and you need to hold on to that. And don't get overconfident. Yeah, Another Arsenal pick, by the way, uh, by Fala. What, what did you say is the def uh, deciding factor about whether you're picking Arsenal or the uh, Vault damage? Mm. I think Arsenal's just better for wave clear, like playing the map. That is fair enough. Boy, super out of position, getting strafed and wiped. Sir is there. Positioning. Mistakes were made. Uh, Ihot Wood is taking a huge amount of damage from Phoenix, though, and Gargantuan has once again managed to get itself confused and decides to stand still. Yeah, I think you get Death Dealer when you have like a stun comp. Uh, but when you play like for the late game with Johanna, Dahak, and Azibo, which is definitely like a map control way, a late game style, you just help with that. You go for the multi shot. Very nice, blessed shield, oh, zombie wall here. That's almost Ooh. gonna get Malf. I don't know how he survived. Oh, Twilight Dream must have played a big part of that. Stage dive, massive turnaround there, and Johanna goes down. Will Rhaegar go down as well? He looks to be in trouble, but he will get away. He will, but now they're down a hero with Web Weaver spawning in, which means they're going to miss out on a huge amount of their push potential. Like you said, insane turnaround there. Absolutely perfectly done. 
And Malfurion living there is such a big deal. I feel like they did really well on Malf, actually. The, uh, the displacement, the damage, the zombie wall. Um, I thought that was gonna work. Oh, oh my dude, word. ETC spin. with the flank. Ethereal Angel being exactly Dead. where he needs to be. <laughs> Zamini does die, but they get Rhaegar too. They're going for Ziku now, trying to get him. Phoenix is dropped. Adaptation will keep Ziku alive here. Grenade nearly finishes off Nuti though. Uh, that's uh, two for one, and it's Leoric. It's only Leoric. So that's another great map control advantage here for Team Zealot, which will help them to uh, safely rotate down and get the final Webby. It looks healthy, but it's not going to do that much because of the timing that ETC comes in. Maybe 10% damage on the forward. I think it'll make Leoric feel bad like that. It's only Leoric. He's back God. already. He's back <laughs> earlier despite being higher level. Soaking, getting gems, don't worry. He's uh, yeah, willing no, to Leoric sacrifice is... himself for the team. If someone has to die, it should be Leoric. Almost. And why not again? And why not again? He's taking damage hard and bones though. Him alive for the moment. In comes Ziku. Good drag. That is going to be a kill. Um, that was a wonderful 10 seconds of life. He got three gems, lost it, <laughs> but he lived. He knows he's alive. He f he's he had is. feelings. He's never felt so alive. Well, he's not Except alive. when he was. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, the last time he was alive was in Diablo 1. Feels bad, man. Yes, it's true. And then he was trained. Actually, it was probably pre-Diablo 1. I don't think you ever saw him alive in Diablo 1 except in flashbacks. No, yeah, that's an excellent point. I think it is all just uh, story stuff. Remember, guys, if you once you kill Leoric, remember to collect that shin bone. You can go to the <laughs> area of Whimsy Shire. <laughs> Rask clearing nice, that thank up, you. but instead gets entombed. But no follow-up damage. Gargantuan to block the gate there <laughs> in the entomb. Gargantuan, hold the door. Sorry, is having to pull back because he's taking huge damage from Phoenix. Good knock-up onto Ziku, but once again, adaptation keeps him alive. Lot of a uh, lot of hustle and bustle, but no actual substance. No one going down there. I just saw the hacker grow a second arm again when he cast adaptation. Did you know that? No, I did not know that. That's good. Well, he, he, he gets his second arm back when he uh, gets his heroic when he picks it. Uh, I just saw him grow it. I think when he dies, maybe uh, he loses it again. Maybe that would be that would be cool. Or maybe it just uh, went aglow and he already had it. I don't know. Maybe. I guess there's Not better sure. things to talk about. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Thatcher. <laughs> no, this is what we do. We find the cool things. <laughs> and speaking of cool things, Superstition and Gloom. So double spell block from uh, Ma here. Johanna having to pull back, gets entombed again. Man, how many entombs are there? I mean, so many. Sora is spinning, doing huge damage to Shad. Shad is taken out, but now Sora is getting focused out by Zarmany. It is Tychus in exchange for nothing right now. Nuti trying to get more. They get Grand Paqueta too. Maw, on? once again, has managed to realize, oh yeah, we can actually do things in this game. Three levels down, talent down, with a team that's designed on defense and counterattack. They move forward and kill people. This is yeah. uh, pretty mad. Sora is straight finishing Tychus there, and then uh, Johanna catching uh, Grandpa get mouth. On the bright side, they didn't kill ETC, who has 36 gems currently, which is quite nice. Now they're going to attempt to get some revenge by killing Zihu, who has 33. Let's uh, see if they can. Entomb is back. Oh, did he show? Nope. Well, he left I him. don't know, but either way, I guess he's tunneling up because it's safer. That's where his team is. Uh, Makes sense either way. Very uh, timely tunnel out. As he didn't overstep, he didn't go into the bush, and then he borrowed away. They got the turn in. And they're about to reach level 16. Ma's doing some miraculous things here tonight, guys. They really are. They're showing that doesn't matter. They are showing a full 6.5% of skill here. Yeah. 6.5% skill. 100% chance of making a comeback. <laughs> they're pushing through this. When we were spawning for Ma here, and they're beginning to put some pressure onto that top lane. Fountain will 100% die. Looks like Fort will as well with the four man push here. Zahaka with a tunnel up. He's Let's keep talking in absolutes. This fort is 100% sure going to die. So is this tower. Yeah, tower's dead. Zahaka can join at any point here if we wish to tunnel. And the mid fort, actually under serious harass as well, with the web we were being at half health. Should be able to get that too. Yeah, I think so. That's available, remember, by the way. So oh, the Wraith Walk in kills. engage with the threat of an Entomb. Everyone moves back. They need to kill these gates in order to be able to properly dodge that. Yeah, and that's what they're going to do. Killing them off so they can't be used to help buff the Entomb. The hacker was thinking about going into the fort from behind to try and catch a Thera Angel, but the minions weren't there in time, so they wouldn't have been able to tank it. Oh, yeah, that's true. 
Now there's only three, and it pretty much ends this one. Level 17, 17. Once again, need I remind it's you, we were at level 8 versus 10. Break dead. I mean, if someone had to die, it's best if it's Leo, right? Yep, it's true. If That's someone had to die, which was not the case. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Very true. And as such, the push has re-begun as the fort begins to die. At their age, we're getting slowed by the totem, and he's now getting chased out by Rasky. He has many spiders. No, no, uh, no, 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 biting no, no, no. it onto his butt right now, but he shall survive. 50 gems. Frost That's shots coming gems. out. They really want to kill that. They really want to kill ETZ. That's going to be no, so if good. Oh, to why die, would you revive there? If someone Rainwalk. has to die, it's best if it's Leo, right? <laughs> Down he goes. Okay, it's Harmony. <laughs> He's beginning the drain. Round four. <laughs> I'll be back soon. <laughs> Why does uh, Sarmony keep working with allies that betray him? I thought Leoric will only work with allies that will never betray him. Where are they? He knows how to engage. It was not even in this game. We're, We're seeing the turn in happening by more. There's still a couple gems short, but with Leoric down again, they're in a good position to once again just keep control of the map and keep farming. They are pushing up, however, the synergy we saw before, and they're giving XP over to Zealots here. But uh, where is Ma getting all this bonus XP? don't know. I, I guess the Auric. <laughs> <laughs> think so too. There's a fair amount coming from there. Uh, they currently still need so many gems though, with the lanes pushed up it's a bit more difficult. Rask getting a bit from the mid lane. Top lane is so pushed up though. And EDC finally gets his 50 gems, oh. thank god. Alright, that kind of snuck past me. Yeah, I missed that as well. I was looking yes. like where they get, so I was looking where they were going to get their gems from. I was looking at Burning Rage from Rask. <laughs> I think you were too. Yeah, it's good. It's good to help him clear lanes. Zarmody uh, has returned and is actually clearing a lane instead of dying. Whoever gets this the next kill will reach level 21st. If yep. no kill happens, the Wet Weavers will make it all the way to the Triple Keeps. And it's actually a bit of a tough staggering by Ma, or lack of staggering, I should say. The fact that all lanes are in the middle means yeah, that they will all reach same time, which is not ideal. Normally you want to have one deep pushed, one deep pushed against you and one in the middle. It allows you to respond to one by one. But look at that, yeah. they're all well managed actually by Zealot. Yeah, they're having to, uh, this does require more to now defend from their own base, which means the minion waves will gather up a little bit, but this is also a big boosted XP for Zealots who have been behind for quite a while now, but are now creeping to 20 far quicker. This is a fight without the Haka, not ideal. They lack some serious yeah. uh, lockdown damage and tankiness there. Uh, the Haka will finish. Will he do another wave? It's so tempting! The XP? No. Okay. They want 20. Iron Skin preventing Rask from getting locked down there. He is able to fight. Oh, nice Tomb vault! Serious with the vault to dodge. Very nice vault. And Tomb there on Leoric. Well, if someone had to die, it better be Leoric. But yeah, he doesn't he need to survive. die today. No, he doesn't. And in the meantime. Both teams are about to hit level 20. ETC and Zarbani staying around in this top plane, thinking about soaking there, decide against it. But Ziku has been down here this entire time. His team defended 4 versus 5 while he soaked them to 20. Very good movement by Ziku. He saw that he maybe needed, goes up. But then when the situation changed, he went back down. And that's what gave his team now level 20 and a good amount of gems. Always be flexible. Bye. See if the situation changes. Your moves may need to change. Iron Skin already comes out. So did the Heroic, and all he's got now is indestructible to save himself. Ziku has arrived though, and Iron Skin will be respawning over time as long as he doesn't get caught out again. Vine Infection uh, is up, by the way. About five seconds out, Iron Skin, but uh, Blessed Shield is still unavailable. Oh, gets nice and tubed. He's in trouble. Getting a good amount of heal just with his essence, though. Big red button has been deployed. Getting some good damage onto Rust. Drain's happening by Zarmody. Looking for an opportunity. He does not have it tubed for another 38 seconds. He has to retreat. Big red button. Huge damage. Once again, Rust getting slightly worked out. I had to get his pops just to make sure he doesn't get CC'd. And we are just seeing a retreat happening here out of Ma. They're just burning abilities. Remember, Gargantuan, Adaptation, and Ancestral all still available. But so is stage dive. Just cast a gargantuan on here, would they? Yeah, he doesn't want to waste it. Yeah, it's so much damage now about infection. Uh, oh, that's Rask five webbies. Zarmony is gonna die to Nazibo. Yeah, try to focus it down. Zarmony is trying to escape. Bless shield lands. Ziku coming in with basically no health. We're doing huge damage. Twilight lands it, but adaptation heals him back up. We will see Johanna indestructible through this. Zuris dodging the roots. I hot woe chasing down. They get Malfurion. 
and now they want anyone else if they could get... That's two kills, though, for one. We did finally see Johanna die. Yeah, wow. Uh, Grandpa Cat died as well. Yeah, Johanna was trying to get the most out of this. Blessed Shield came back. But the combined fury of Nazebo and Farflight Quiver Vala is so insane. No one can stand against that for more than a second before they already find themselves in deep pain and need to run. Now the red web weavers are coming out. Ma gets that. Now, with the nature of being on the offense and equal death timers, this is not going to be ideal for Ma. Johanna will be far out while Ma comes back already. Leoric, of course, came back already since he's spooky skeleton it can come back early yep he it's gonna be a hard push here without their tank the main tank indeed the hacker's gonna be able to do a good job and as such they're doing it differently instead of going in for a full all-in push that they would if johanna were alive they're splitting it up putting some pressure on the top lane, then rotating out of it whereas uh the hacker soaked in the mid lane a bit now johanna's on the way mafurian is back and as such is nearer to his own base so he will be available Okay, Joanna comes back. Melf already is, of course. Let's talk about vision. What does Ma see? Does he ETC here? Does he see the rest here? So he can kind of maybe apply pressure to top, yeah, and that's they what they're doing. Kale. Zombie they wall could zone out a lot of people here, as could Gargantuan. Yeah, at the moment, sticking with Toads, just dropping so much damage. But I will say, a huge amount of assistance is coming in by Athero Angel for the heal in two misses, but it does zone out Nuti a bit. But he's just dealing huge damage to Zombie right now. Oh, that flame strike does barely land on Zickel here. But he does survive. Gargantuan will get blown up here. But they were able to guarantee a key. He threw web weavers inside this obelisk. <laughs> so he was unable to hit. No spiders. Oh, cool. Vero takes huge damage once again. Drops an encore. So he uh, is able to zone everything out. Oh, that oh burning flash onto Ziku kills him off. Ah, uh, stage dive. Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> oh, but the Z mount! Oh, grab get a bold Twilight Dream! Down goes Valor! The Zebo is trying to attack through, but he's completely isolated. Rask is gonna go push top lane because that's all he can do because he knows that this might just be GG here. He's trying to force ports. This is a non catapult minion wave only push on the core. Completely useless. Yeah, he's holding back. He knows he has to defend. He can't win a course race solo. It has to be a delay. He is now back. He needs to do everything he can to try and delay this. But with the big red button, it might not be enough, Grubby. It looks like it's going to be a 1-1 one -one in this best of three finals. Yeah, just when I thought that Ma took it back definitively, this happened. And, uh, and they died. And Team Zealot takes it back. It looks like whoever is slated to win will not. In this <laughs> final, Team Zealot takes it back. 1-1. One -one. Very well done by them. Uh... How did they come back? Kelthras threw all of his spells at Daka and basically almost insta-killed him. It was a very good yeah. rotation of skills here by Poyok. Well aimed, and uh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, once again, Poyok showing to be just an immensely dangerous player. He had Flamethrower at level 20 as well, so he was just standing from super far away and just throwing fire at people. Daka, I don't know what he had available, be it Burrow, regeneration, his, his alt or what have you. I think his alt was not available. And in terms of his talents, what did he take? Change his survival. He the, mm. Yeah, he took the movement burrow, which uh, helped him quite a few times to escape. I don't know. I mean, I didn't have full overview of all the abilities that were available. Was Clan still there? Probably not. No, that wasn't. That was gone. 1-1. One, one. And uh, it is a best of three, so we will be taking it to a third. And the map, is it going is to be Dragonshire? Dragon. Nice. It is indeed. You have been invited. So I, can I just say quickly? Yeah. How absolutely impressed I am with just how versatile the top of Open League has been. We have, like, for, like if we look at the teams as they have been in the past three cups, we have five teams that could enter the Crucible. Yeah. Ma has That's definitely... That's a lot. Ma has grown a lot. <laughs> Polska, Pimienta, yeah. Team Zelle, Tossers, Ma. Really good teams here in the Open Division. Any one of them could pose a serious threat. Not just in their current shape, but in how much they are slated to yet improve by the time the Crucible comes around. And they actually, in truth, get to challenge the bottom two pro team division. Uh, pro, pro division teams. 
gonna be awesome. I'm excited I'm so, for that one, man. Same. It's gonna be so good. Best of sevens as well. That's just because there's one thing you don't get to practice for here, and that's endurance competition. And Warhead Junction. <laughs> yeah, you have to play it, I guess. Yeah, oh, that's gonna be so cool. I mean, you don't have uh, but to. You don't I have guess. to. Yeah, if you leave it till last. If it's a close series, yes. Yeah, which I guess would be a really cool way to end a series with a bang. I don't, I don't Warhead know if Junction you want to end nukes. on Warhead. Maybe just get it over with. Maybe, maybe. Imagine three, three. All comes down to Warhead. No one ever practiced <laughs> it. <laughs> no one practiced it. It's like, how do we play this map? Yeah. What are nukes? Well, what are they? <laughs> they? They like try to land it on the doodads of the map instead of on the cities, yeah. on the forts. I can't... Oh yeah. Not that I yeah. ever saw an example of that on Reddit. I saw that on Reddit. It was very funny. Oh, no. <laughs> it was like, oh this, is this the call? <laughs> that looks legit. <laughs> but no, it is the planet. It's the sort of planetary fortress, but not. Is what the core is on that map. So these bands look familiar, Gravy. Except Tastar was banned first. Yeah. Uh. So let's see. Okay. Why would you do that? You want Rag. You want Rag or Daharka. Or maybe you want Rag, yeah. I mean, we'll never know, because Daharka got banned, but... Yeah. Uh, I guess so, on Dragonshire, rag. rag really is not as dominant as Daharka, to be honest. Maybe they wanted Daharka. Maybe. Well, they're taking the time to consider this, actually. Plenty of options. Not Furian, yeah, wow. Hmm. Now, uh, Zealots can pick up a Ragnaros if they wish to. This isn't his best map, but there is no map that Ragnaros is bad on. There's just maps that he is better on than others. Yeah, whenever I play Rag on Dragon, I'm like, should I use my trait now just to poke at people who stand on the beacon? Like, is that good enough? You can defend the Dragonite, but it moves fairly fast, so he can just move to a different lane. Yeah, you can use it to siege the shrine, give your team a chance to jump back onto that. So he works quite well at the uh, bot lane or the top lane. Yeah, it's but different from like being... the uh, mindless automatons that Immortals and Punishers are, who will generally push down the lane that they start in. Dragon Knight being a vehicle, is piloted by one of the heroes, can act more smartly. Indeed, or... Well, he's been slipping through the draft so far, so a chance he might be picked, here's a chance he might not be. Teams might have a better idea, because like you said, this is a map he doesn't get as much value on. Still strong, with high numbers, just not as much value from the trait. Now, counterpicking Zealot would mean taking Tychus here, and then banning Rhaegar. That would be very lovely. That would be very lovely indeed. Uh, well, if, it, if they really wanted to target stuff, then they could pick Tychus Arthas right now. Yeah, that's true. Or Tychus Tyrael. That's cool too. They do their Harry own thing. Rag. Yeah. They've gone for the... Uh, that was that was BlizzCon. Yeah, they've gone for the entire BlizzCon. Uh, Announcement right now. <laughs> <laughs> so do you ban Rhaegar here to remove it from Grand Paquette? In my opinion, Grand Paquette is one of the star performing players here on the team. I'd agree. I think that would be a very solid ban. Uh, or do you remove Tychus? Also potentially strong. It depends what they want to run as a second warrior, because Varian is probably one of the warriors that works best for Zealot Band Tychus, and that's going to solve a whole lot of problems. Always confuses me when a team removes a hero that would work well for when their them. first pick. Yeah. After bands. Yeah. So obviously these teams know better themselves and their opponents than we ever could. So there could be a reason for this. There probably is a reason yeah. for this. There probably is a reason, but that's what it is. Like it's banned out, so now it's just sort of an easy, easy Rhaegar ban. Sorry, Matt Mercer. Not going to make it through this time. <laughs> well, actually, yes, he is. He's Ragnaros. He's made it through the draft. Well done. <laughs> How many heroes <laughs> did he voice? Uh, Rag, Rhaegar, McCree, but he's not in the game yet. So three, I believe. He's not in the game yet? Did we just get confirmation from Thatcher that he's coming into the game? Oh my god, McCree. He's one of the Overwatch Texas. heroes and they're coming in. I expect that he'll he is be a here hero. eventually. Overwatch heroes may make it in. Got it. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. So, Theorycraft. Thatcher did confirmed. It. Okay, got it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, curious what his ult would be if he would come in, but we'll find that out. That's a good ban. Dealing yes, with Grand Paquette. 
Uh, so what is Grand Peter, he's, he's good on most healers, but if he wanted to go for burst, Karazim with seven sided could work. Counter burst also gives a palm, but that would make everyone vulnerable to Varian because of no cleanse. Right wing is available and like a bit more global. I don't like palm because Sophia Smash will follow up on it on the target. True. So right wing maybe? Yeah. Uh, maybe you need a secondary um, support. Bright wing Zarya could be That'd decent, be cool. but I don't really like ETC Zarya together too much. Bright wing ETC, uh, bright wing Medivh. Mm, yeah. Jane Leo. No. <laughs> That's not in the slightest bit like Bright Wing Medivh. No, it isn't. That's not even close. Uh, would However, that does open up a... It does open up Karazim to be a slightly more viable option with seven-sided. Yeah. And you'll know by then whether Varian took uh, Shield War or not. Yes. <laughs> so you'll be able to work that out from there. Honestly, I don't think we're seeing it from Zealot just because of how standard they have been playing. Yep, still probably going to be right wing. I think Uther will be decent here. Uh, no, he'll be terrible. No, <laughs> there's there's good things about him and there's bad. The bad is Dragonshire is an extended laning phase kind of map. Yeah, so he doesn't have the most mana. The, the good thing is with people like Ethereal Angel on your team as ETC, you're probably guaranteed doing really well in the four man rotation. A lot of globes, yeah. can get a lot of mana, and not have the worst sustain in the world. We have also mentioned that we have seen Uther in professional play. Right. Uh, in the last oh couple days. And Zebo again. <laughs> he, he is the god. That mm. solo variant tank. So, standard, Brightwing, out there, Uther, Corazine for damage. Completely unexpected. Um, would be. Taranda. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think you'd do that against Varian. Yeah, it'd be unexpected. But it would be a, uh, would be amusing just a full lockdown with Jaina Falstad follow up. <laughs> Ragnaros gets resilient flame though. He b doesn't become an easy target. Neither is Varian, so you only have backliners to stun combo. Not ideal. <laughs> Let's save some lives. Morales, we didn't, mention didn't even Morales. think about that. So I guess that's the unexpected pick. <laughs> but I, I think it is a good pick. I do as well. A ranged support. With good single target healing against Varian, who generally singles out a single target. It's not yeah, really. Unless a... he's the single target, in which case that's pretty rough, yo. And then you you get cleanse on a range support. Karazim doesn't have cleanse, neither does Taronda. Brightwing sacrifices much, taking cleanse, and doesn't have targeted heals, making you have weak early game. I like Morales. And and still I think that Maz stratagem here to deny Grand Paquette two of his major comfort heroes and power heroes it has kind of paid off I'd agree this is definitely a bit of a uh, I wouldn't say weaker but definitely a bit more of a, a jankier zealot draft than usual so let's introduce it ladies and gentlemen on the left hand side in the blue trunks it is team zealots playing for them Grand Paquetta is on that Morales Ethera Angel on ETC, Poik on Jada, Zabri on the uh, Leoric, and Shad on Falstad. Yeah, still has, its, still has its purpose and still has its place. But it's, it's good for lane clearing I, too when a minion wave is yeah. in a Congo line. But like, I don't think it's. Yeah, uh, it works if you're in a blow up comp, in my opinion. But season just and, does more, I think. I, I I personally prefer it as well. I've, I've run the bribe on larger Two, maps sometimes, but mostly one. a season. Yeah, me too. I like it on Warhead. The bribe. Yes, it's lovely on Warhead. You don't often back. get a lot of help on Warhead. You're often by yourself. The Murkamps are far away from lane, so it makes a lot more sense there than here. Okay, hold up. Minion block. It's <laughs> <laughs> amazing. Can he get a second this time, though? Can he get a second? <laughs> His team pinged him. Yeah. <laughs> Ping, assist. The enemy team is blocking with four people, so, with five people, so let's see which one makes it uh, first. Easily, the five bad block. Owned. <laughs> so well played. And it makes him stack easier as well. You can do all this safely. Yeah. I like it. And it Beautiful. gives them a, a full wave clear before the other team even rotates. It's so cool. Absolutely. I, uh, Very I'm, nicely played. I'm More. Gonna, I love I'm gonna it. Copy this. <laughs> I'm going to copy this so hard. Yep. I'm going to write oh. it down. I'm going to carbon it. I'm going to oh. claim it as my own. Yep. 
Oh yeah, <laughs> plagiarism, sure. Yeah, just don't just don't upload any videos of Mars games and the, then the grubby do a minion video of it block yourself. strategy. <laughs> <laughs> the grubby and Tetcher development process of minion wave block strategy. <laughs> See you in here first, guys. Yeah, it's already here first. It's on Grubby Stream, therefore it's his idea. Falsad rotating up to the top lane. Looks like they want to try and grab uh, Ragnaros here, who heals up and then decides to run towards the enemy base as he dies. Oops! Wrong side. No, he couldn't get away. That's It was fair enough trying to delay. Well, now that he knows away. which side his base is on, I expect that won't happen again. <laughs> Shad taking an extra, uh, taking a lovely long rotation, making sure he wasn't caught out. But uh, either way, Top Shrine currently going over to Zealots here. Bottom Shrine is held by Ma. And we have the Overpower coming out. Is that a good choice? It's okay. The what, sorry? Uh, I, find, I find it difficult to judge when Varian should or should get Overpower. It's like when he blocks a hero's basic attack. You can take this all the time against someone who cannot help but hit you, like uh, Zarya. But yeah. to take it here over High Kings or Lion's Maul, I'm not sure per se why. I'm not saying it's bad or good, just not sure. Oh, nice grenade! Yeah, very nice. Looty is oh. pretty effed. He's turning around, doing some damage to Shad at least, but he still goes down. Quite, quite, sir. Pretty effed indeed. Indeed. Fire Ward from Ragnaros here, trying to block some of that Jaina damage as opposed to the Globe Talent. Yeah, 50% spell block. Up to two charges. Oh! <laughs> the full chase. Can't escape Varian. In the meantime, uh, we're gonna have blue lasers channeling, which is gonna make it a bit difficult for Ma to do a four man rotation. They need to leave someone here. Who did they choose to leave? Varian. Malf nope, Malfurion. He does have the extra range. Yes, they lose Grace. They're gonna leave two. Okay, so Nazibo's trying to take this, but he will have to contend. With a three-man rotation, which uh -oh. he sees, he's in trouble. Uh -oh. He drops the zombies, gets hit by a grenade for the second time in the last couple of minutes, and realizes that he really doesn't like Morales, and then dies. Oh, that's the problem. That is uh, the the pressure of double laser, where you need to leave one or two mid to stop the DK, yeah. and then you dedicate one or two to a beacon. And if the laser team is smart, they don't uh, laser focus on the middle like oh let's get the dragonite like in hero league no they they use the uh divide and conquer to kill the beacon capture yeah and that's what they're doing again ziku once again getting He's zoned dead. away from his base shad coming in for the kill oh shad taking huge damage here suris Ooh. arrives just in time and ziku will actually probably survive this his teammate will not be so lucky that's what you get for trying to help yeah oh turn around variant arriving trying to do some damage to drain on ziku Force him to retreat. That's such Zombie will probably live this as well. I really. Uh, also, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, have a look at uh, Morales' level 4 talent and that confidence. Infuse grenade? Infuse grenade. He is that confident in hitting his grenades. My he word. He wants just to keep the mana. <laughs> and also, dead Morales gets all their mana back. So it also <laughs> shows that he neither needs advanced block nor uh, thinks that. The lack of it, yeah, we'll get him. Anyway, he thinks he'll stay alive a long time that he actually needs all his mana. Yeah, very, very interesting. It probably also means that he's either going to go for the extra healing or the uh, couple's therapy. Yeah, yeah good point. Spam it a good bit point. As well. If you, it's true. If you uh, get all the mana talents, like uh, I mean, if you don't get this mana talent or the one at level one, and you get couple's therapy or uh, intensive, you run out of mana super fast. Yeah, very nice true. Cleanse. Jada getting healed and is able to stay alive thanks to the cleanse, like you said. Uh, what do you think of the uh, the uh, the, the mana talent on level one with shield sequencer? The fact um, that it just gives you more mana than you started with. Shield sequencer has a twenty second cooldown, so it is not fantastic to get that mana back. Grenade can be cast more often. I think it's twenty seconds or sixteen or eighteen. It's fairly Something long like anyway. That. I do like it, yeah. and I would take it on Braxis, but scouting drone is just. I think too good not to take. Yeah, I just, I just like the fact that there is a way in the game to cast two abilities which help your team and finish with more mana than what you started with. Yeah, and, and once you get, cool uh, if you get the second shield at sixteen. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. If you oh, take the mana, if right, you take right. the mana thing, yeah. and the second one is free, right, so right. you just get free mana. So you start. Uh, 
cast two abilities and finish with more mana than what you start than what you had before you cast yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. It's the Muradin feeling. Infused hammer at one, <laughs> and then the piercing bolt. You just bolted yeah. two heroes. You get ten bonus damage. They're stunned, damaged, and you just gain mana. Infinite value. Pretty, it feels great. It's just mm. not as good as some of the other things. Muradin the investment banker. Yeah, Medivac has been taken by Morales, giving her team some mobility, which is good. Gives you a good opportunity to try and sneakily get a Dragon at night. But uh, this is a familiar place. Uh, more two levels behind. You know what would be sick? Medivac, open with Medivac, onto someone, then land in a tomb, fly ETC into it, drop out, and mosh pit in the tomb. That would be cool. That would be very cool, but unfortunately, ETC has taken stage dive. Yeah, and unfortunately, the got, idea is rubbish, and Medivac moves. travels too slowly. Yeah, the Medivac in this case is probably, once again, as we mentioned before, being used as a sort of pseudo ice block with mobility for Grand Paqueta. Yeah, exactly. Now, of course, on Dragon Chair, there are additional options. Uh, sometimes the game goes long, and you may use it to all in the core, or you actually go to top or bottom shrine suddenly. Even just yep. by yourself, you don't have to tr teleport the whole team. But like you said, yeah. Uh, a con convoluted ice block is generally what it'll do. Yep, gust used to try to keep Zabadia alive. Sophia smash easily dodged, and the gust very nicely done indeed. Currently, both shrines looking to be held by zealots, but Ras coming in. There's the taunt, focusing him down. But rape walk is good, yo. So is Morales, and the draft for Team Zealot just looks dominant here. ETC yeah. stage dive with false start. While one team is forced to five man because anytime the tides could be turned against them, the other is unconcernedly just clearing the lanes, getting XP, and can at any time once again make that nightmare come true. Look at this, it's a 3v3, oh, seems time. fair, right? Yeah, but at any time, uh, well, uh, in the meantime, actually, Zikul is dying, and now a their angel could come down and join his team if he wanted to to turn this into a 4 versus 4. Volstead could fly down as well once that comes back. Zabri's about to die. Down he goes. Oh, the Twilight Dream to counter ETC arriving. Here comes Volstead, though. Sorry, has to reposition himself. There's a good start onto... Oh, the oh. gust is good, though. And that's, that's going to be a many deaths. Grand Paqueta trying to attack his way through. Oh. Metamax to safety. And Nuti punished for his chasing potential. And that is everyone dead. Rag was dead at the start of this. So that's a full team wipe. But Rag for, is already back. For just Leo. Uh, really yeah. well done and the power of globals on Dragonshire. Team Zealot is running away with this and I don't think, despite what we've seen in game 1 and 2, Ma can turn this around quite as magically because I think it's going to happen faster, the hurting. Uh, two levels lead here and Dragonite has been taken, but who knows? We're still actually at 6 forward for 6 forward, so way premature. Okay, well now we're going to see some drag value. Zarmony, uh, is he, he's just going to burst through it, not even going to rotate. He's just all in again. I mean, bye, when, you're, bye. when you're that deep. But he will taunted actually just pay the price for it. Yeah, they just taunted the DK. That was also quite cool. Rafe walked to make sure there was no follow up when he popped out of it. But that was a very quick DK kill. Nicely done. Yeah, I mean, he was 75% life. Why should he rotate? Just kill the fort. But actually, he got nothing done. A yeah. very low fort was taken out, and that's about it. Uh, Nazebo, by the way, 102 uh, stacks currently. Oh. Stage dive coming in. Where's the Entomb? Torp was you to try and delay it. ETC zoning out Rask, who is killed off. Entomb used, gets no one. Disintegrate used as a... Uh, well, very little, actually. <laughs> but either way, <laughs> Rask getting beam. killed off. Yeah, the Dissuasion Beam. A uh, couple's therapy, like you uh, alluded to. Crushing Hope, Encore, Giant Killer, and uh, Icy Veins. No level 13 just yet for Ma. Yeah, they're uh, approaching it, but uh, Zealots are also approaching 60, which is slightly rougher. Zami sweeping up those zombies with his skeletal swing. Doing a good job with that. And Nuti taking some brass, but nice orbs from Suriz, but there's not enough follow up because Procroc's already fully stacked. Look at that. Uh, once again, coming with the superstition. Of course, it's mostly all magic damage, so another great choice. Knuti with the very forward positioning. I almost feel like he wants them to try and go for it. This is not a usual assassin. This is a <laughs> this is a specialist. He's very hard to kill now. Yeah, he is getting very tanky. Remember, he does have the uh, big. Oh no, he didn't take big voodoo. He took hex crawlers. Yeah, he, he changed it up this time. 
Yeah, 75% of his max health when they attack an enemy hero, which is good sustain if you are uh, fighting someone. Uh, it is also shield sequencer. Uh, it is the double sp it is the double spam on uh, level uh, 16 for Morales. Okay. Second Neat. one at no cost. Yeah, he didn't take the mana uh, return, so as such he's not going to get the infinite mana. <laughs> but uh, either way, that's still a lot of extra sustain for his team. He can drop it on himself if he wants to, which is always very nice if you didn't take uh, one, the free one for yourself at level 1. Trauma trigger, yeah, that's true. Mm, actually, I'm it's trauma it. trigger that had the 20 seconds cooldown. I'm pretty sure the uh, safeguard is actually much shorter than that. More uh, than 10, less than 20. Oh, free DK by the look of it, immediately for Zealot. No contestant at all because there was a bruiser camp in the top lane that was preventing any kind of rotation. Okay, let's see what uh, what it can get this time. Will Zika once again take this forward? Yep. But this time Shad is in a much better position. Of course, it wasn't Shad last time, it was Zarmony. But either way, much better position. And I feel like that was a bit too early, taking the rag. Shad was waiting yeah. for it. It, it yeah, was the uh, yeah early trigger. Yeah, he's rotated up and as such, the Rakaros cancels the Molten Core and will move up to the top lane to make sure that he is available to help his team as quick as possible. And Shad able to use a DK to help clear up the Bruiser camp, so good value. Ford goes down, 17 versus 14 again. This is the situation Ma apparently likes to find themselves in before they turn on the comeback train. Nazebo, we've said it before, still a late game hero. If he can more, get there. More is like a bee, and this is going to be a weird analogy. But, uh... They're dying out, for starters, the bees, so it feels like they're feels behind, bad. but if one stings you, it's pretty rough. That's a terrible analogy, I love it. <laughs> You've been holding out on me, sir. <laughs> I didn't even think of that, I, that one literally just came to mind. Zombie getting uh, moon fired, so tiny bit of vision, all that really does, he's too tanky and moon fired is too little. Not gaining a huge amount. 16, slowly approaching for Mar here, for a zealots creeping their way slowly towards a level 20, playing very far forward. They're not having putting themselves in that situation where they can't move to the enemy side of the map. They're just keeping themselves so far ahead that they can still get XP. And this time, if they avoid a level 19.8 fight like they did in game number one, they should be having this game on lockdown. It's it's always been a surprising fight that MMA of uh, that uh, Ma suddenly won on Tomb of the Spider Queen. Uh, on yeah. uh, on Infernal Shrine, so if they avoid that moment and properly play super defense, well, they should be uh, not giving it away. Zarmini not really doing that. Oh, bye. Well, I mean, if someone has to die, <laughs> it better be Leoric. <laughs> Hopefully, not six times again in a row. No, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. But now it's even talent. Rack, Rask being chased down. His uh, his standard very quickly wiped out here. Still taking damage, here comes stage dive! You can't parry a stage dive! But there's the Twilight Dream, Rask escapes! Gust is used to prevent it, and look at that Gargantua just wailing <laughs> on the Thero. Yeah. Rabaketa having to heal him up here. Oh, I mean, Rask pretty lucky to be alive there. After stage dive and Mighty Gust got used on him, it was an excellent Twilight Dream save there by I Hot Woman. Really nice play by him as well. The entangles, the, the Twilight Dreams, the zombie wall by Knitty to stop ATC. Yep, showing very, very uh, they're showing up good. Even though they are currently behind, they're showing up very good, but it is currently halfway through level 19 for Zealots here, and they're just moving straight to shrines. Okay, um... right, even, I'm, I'm looking at this, even if Ma win their crazy late game fights as they seem to always, what then? All the faults are alive. Yeah, it'll be like one forward, reset, breathe, another keep wall they need to win like three fights basically yeah, or one fight with a level with a 20 minute dk yeah i think maybe they're quick enough with that but i think in that case they'd have put rag in the d uh sorry uh mouth in the dk just so they'd have enough damage uh yeah, or varian maybe or varian yeah that might be good all right well zarmony for now but now their defense is solid level 20 has just been achieved though it is, uh, of course, the Caduceus Reactor 2.0 for Morales, so even more mana. The Auric with Spectral Leech improved Ice Block for Jaina to prevent this kind of late game fight. ETC with Bolt of the Storm, just for some escape potential. Epic Mount 
for Falstad. All right, use it well, Falstad. <laughs> Remember <laughs> what happened fly. on Inferno. <laughs> Need to be careful, dude. Don't I think I wasn't point. there for that. Darmody getting focused down. He's doing some keep damage. Getting taunted, though. And Rag is dropped with Molten Core. Looks like they want to try and siege down and get a fight here. Molten Swing is landed. Zarmody so taking a lot of damage here. Oh, hello! They got him! No, oh. never mind Morales. Uh, I missed that really one, but I know what happened. So first smash, wasn't it? Yeah, he hit him with it. Rask is entombed. Here comes Stage Dive ETC from the other side of the map. It's immediately rooted and turned on. While Rask tries to delay for his team, he will get focused down, though zoned out. And that's going to be one kill for zero. That was pretty cool. The entomb into the stage dive created two big problems for Ma to worry about. And it was, it was difficult. Yeah. Oh, wow. Big hit there with Seeker Fireflies. Uh, uh, Seeker, Mirable. Seeker Mirable, actually. Yeah, Seeker Mirable. Yep, so lots of, lots of damage if you can hit that single target. Keep does go down first of the game. And Ma continue to, continuing to feed the scrappy underdog story, but they could only be an underdog for so long. Eventually, you have to climb over that dog. And then what? Well, then you're, you're on the dog. Then you're on the dog. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm gonna I am the master of analogy. I'm going to print this out and put it on my wall. That's so inspiring, <laughs> I, I think I cry. Yeah, but then you can ride a war dog into battle, and then what your enemy's going to do. Uh, there are Angel clearing up the Bruiser camp with his team, and waiting for the next DK to spawn. It's very slow, methodical play by Zealots, just plodding their way towards a victory. Right. Dragon comes back, and actually a little bit too soon for Mars liking. You're, oh, what? Oh, what? okay. What? They want Suris. Suris teleports out. He has Illusionist. He has that extra range trying to escape. He's slowed. In comes Boink. We'll have Illusionist back soon. He teleports, but he's still in drain range. He will go down. Uh, stage dive gust. Yeah, wow. Uh, so far out of position standing at your own keep. <laughs> Which doesn't exist anymore, I guess. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> but, man, there, there is no safe haven, is there, for, for Jaina? Poor Jaina. Ah, uh, Li Poor Li, Li Ming. This is a fun series. Uh, but now we're just seeing the exact same thing happen over and over again. Before level 20 hitting, we're seeing members of Maw getting picked off one by one by one. And now it is a 18 minute DK, which is running straight to bot lane as Li Ming is dead for another 24 seconds. And that's, that's rough because she, she's, uh, she's a big swinger. She can swing a fight. Yeah, Molten Core is available, so Ziku will have a Use little it. bit of counter Use it here. now! They're going to interrupt you. He's There's not. He's back it up. He, might, he probably got onto mid, I think. Mm, oh, he's yeah. Trying to do maybe. as much as he can for the moment. No, no, trying no. To clear he's rotating up. down. Last wave. Yeah, he's looking for an opportunity. Gets stunned up, but he now has that resilience. So he's moving up. Yeah, he's moving straight to mid. Going to try and save himself that way. Rasp tanking in the background. Got Gantua. Oh, the Gust, and, the gust uh, interrupted. Rakaros interrupted. Here it comes, though. Completely blocked by advanced ice block. Falsan getting focused out. Court is on 62%. Ragnarok's doing huge damage here. Jada killed off. Shad killed off. It's Kalaris in the chat. Here comes the stage dive. Core dropping low. Morales in the meta for reasons. Oh! The DC oh! Over. It's up to Morales. She's going for the core. Morales on the and she's down. Oh, the core is saved. Kill the catapults. No. Now what? There's nothing they can do. No. Now what? They can't end. Medivac in. They're just gonna medivac the core and win. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> well, Two <that> percent. <laughs> well, they physically can't win the game. Yeah. If they uh, win this now, it will be. Don't kill the, the tower. Just kill the gate. Come back. Just go straight through. Go, Towers go are not important. Fort. No, don't kill the second tower. Wall on. I oh, want please. you okay. on the fort. There goes the fort. Seven seconds for the Yorick. Stop hitting Longest the Longest one is Morales, who is the most important for this. 24 seconds. The Benefact is back. So this may just turn into a base race. Can they kill 100% of a core before they kill off a shield, basically? Uh, what about Falstad? Falstad could gonna, just go solo, yeah. He's going to attack or defend. Attack or defend. Attack or defend. Falstad, we'll Falstad, 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 Falstad. Rag, does he have multi-core? Yes, he does. 
Uh, he can bolt core now. They might go in. Oh! They're going to kill Leoric. They well, get Leoric. So they keep the molten core. Rag, molten core. He has heroic difficulty. Gust will delay this. So as such, it goes on cooldown because he did already activate it. They're going straight for it. The Gargantuan gets taken out. It's a four versus five at the base of Zealots for the game. Cleanse. Efero gets out back to the cleanse. They're going for it. Ring of Frost. Zeku dodges the Ring of Frost. Frost. He's going for the molten core. We've seen Leoric. We've seen Varian taken out. So many heroes dropping low 80%. here. Frost are trying to take people down. There's the ice block. Is used the core down to 63. Rag doing what he the can. Goes the down. Zebo is killed off, but he does huge damage to Poiki, forcing him back. Ragnaros doing everything he can to hold this game for his team, but it's a free versus four right now. The Dragon Knight is available. Rag is trapped and he is killed off. Suriz is absolutely bowed. It's Medivac clock. It's Medivac clock, Tetcher. They're going to go for it. Meanwhile, Zarmany is actually just going to try and chase Wood, who bolts out of there. They medevac halfway across the oh. map, and they're just going to run for it. A valiant, valiant effort by Moore. But that is GG. Zealots will take game number three, and they will take the third cup of the EU Open Division. Admirably done by Ma. They evolved beyond compare from just a month ago. A much closer series as Team Zealot does take it to one but very well done and much deserved second place by ma it was close until the end team zealot though another cup win two out of the three they still top the rankings and it very very well uh very well played good job i love this league <laughs> i love the open division dude what a great game that was a great game. Great series. Overall, great day in general. <laughs> Just overall in terms of games. It was dropped there. And Sulfuro Smash does actually land here. Stork getting focused down. Icebox was used. This time, Lunar able to pull himself back. BKB with a nice stun. Stork doing a little bit of damage. He still oh! has to use his trade, but they get a kill. Wow. Nice. First kill of the game for them. Shihu dropped low as well. He's able to spin his way to safety, though. Uh, did you see that? And Eleni was thinking of flying. Changed his mind. Actually did a power roll. Poti boss, 39, 39, amateur opponent! One more dash, no! It comes Shrikul trying to get it. Shrikul able to sneak in, but now he's going to die. Juf may die here. He gets stunned up, and that's a full team wipe eventually. Wait, what? Nope, okay, Rhaegar lives.